All right, well, this is going to be the start of a series of videos in a particular city that I'm in that you can probably guess from this image right here. I am in Washington, D.C., uh, which for a history lover is just a smorgasbord of history. Over the next few days, uh, we're going to be hitting several different museums and uh, historic landmarks right here in the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, the first of which is going to be the Smithsonian Museum of American History. So I'm going to start hoofing it down the mall and uh, yeah, we're going to hit our first museum today. I'm going to go ahead and wear it as a badge of honor that I am the first one in line this morning. Or it could be that I'm just the biggest history nerd around here. All right, well, we just made it through security. The airline has my pocket knife, so I didn't have to worry about that. But, uh, start wandering around and exploring and see what we can find in here. A little section here devoted to superheroes and comics. Kind of cool. I never was really a huge fan of the TV series for Wonder Woman, which aired back in the late 70s, but here's the outfit that Linda Carter wore in that series. Over here is where it gets a little cooler for me. Here are the claws for Wolverine. It was worn by Hugh Jackman in uh, Days of Future Past, and there's Captain America's shield from uh, the Winter Soldier, which is my favorite of the Marvel movies. And then here's Batman's cowl and Batarang that was used by George Clooney whenever he portrayed Batman, so this is kind of a mark of shame, but uh, yeah. Pretty neat. And here's the Batmobile that was used by Michael Keaton in the 1989 version of Batman. Kind of neat. All right, well, I'm starting off on the third floor. Uh, this museum is quite large, and there's a really a whole lot going on here. Uh, so I'm going to start in the hall of military history where that's a little bit more of my wheelhouse. This year is the 75th anniversary of the D-Day invasion in Normandy, so it's natural that they would have some stuff dedicated to D-Day. And one of the items they have is a grappling hook that was used by the Army Rangers at Point du Hoc. That is cool. I don't have one of those in my collection, but I need one. Here are some 50 caliber machine gun casings that were recovered from Utah Beach. Interesting. I've noticed that everybody that walks by is stopping to look at this flag. Uh, this is a flag that was flown on LCC-60, which was, well, you can see it right here. This was a uh, landing craft that would guide boats in on D-Day. Uh, this particular one was at Utah Beach, but this is the flag that was flown on that ship, and it's thought, let me move around here, that this hole right in the middle of the blue was made by a German machine gun bullet. Th this flag has captured the attention of everybody that's walked by, though. Apparently, everybody else decided to come to the military hall as well. Oh my gosh, this is crowded. Got a little bit of shooting going on over here, so it's a little bit loud, but of course we have a rule that if we see a gun, 
we have to film it. These are uh, versions of British and American muskets that were used during the Revolutionary War. Yeah, look at there, this is the waistcoat and breeches that was worn by George Washington. All right, here's the uh, camp chest and stool that was used by George Washington in camp. Interesting. So this is pretty cool. This is the sword that was surrendered by the British commander, um, Charles O'Hara, after the Battle of Yorktown. And this is cool. This is George Washington's sword that he wore whenever he was commander-in-chief of the Continental Army. Very interesting. And here's some scraps of the Star Spangled Banner that were cut off the flag from Fort McHenry that were used as souvenirs. Good grief, people. This is kind of interesting. This is a pike, one of 950 that John Brown planned on giving to slave insurgents. And this is an iron slave collar. Wow. It did have three prongs at one time, but now it's only got one. Interesting. There are a few Union weapons of war from the Civil War, as well as a 34 star flag. Pretty dark in here, though. Here are some Civil War uniforms from the Union side. Again, it's so stinking dark in here. It's really hard to see anything, which is kind of a shame. Oh, now this is really neat. These are the chairs and table that were used at the surrender at Appomattox Courthouse. So Lee would have sat in this one, and Grant would have been in this one. Very cool. So this is pretty cool. This is the hat and field service coat that was used by General Leonard Wood, who uh, served with Teddy Roosevelt and his Rough Riders in the Spanish-American War. So there's not really much of a World War I display. I uh, guess we're just going to go ahead and jump right to World War II. So we got a Japanese Arasaka Type 38, which is one of the guns I happen to have, but I don't have a sword yet. Okay, so we finally got into an area where there's some light. And here's a flamethrower from World War II, which, my gosh, that would have been a horrifying weapon because you're automatically a target. And 60 millimeter mortar, and then the good old BAR. Nice. Now this is kind of interesting. These are items that were, uh, I guess, created by prisoners of war. So here's a pipe that had a compass concealed in it. And then a shaving brush and a baseball. Looks normal enough, but they also had little hidden compartments. Interesting. So this is kind of interesting. This is a purple heart that was given posthumously to a guy named Edward Morse who was killed on the Arizona during the Pearl Harbor attack and then just a few little odds and ends from Pearl Harbor like pieces of Japanese bombs Japanese plane this is the radiogram that announced the air raid so a little bit of a little bit of Pearl Harbor stuff here Here's Clark Gable's uniform and hat. He was in the Army Air Force. And uh, yeah, this is his uniform. Alright, so now we moved into the Vietnam War section. Got a Huey helicopter in here, as well as some uh, uniform pieces from Vietnam. And a few guns. Got a M16 there in the back, an M60 here in the foreground. Nice. Also in the Vietnam section, they got an NVA uniform from North Vietnamese Army. Also uh, Viet Cong 
the Viet Cong Gorillas with the AK-47 and then also just some pretty horrific looking mines and booby traps this one just looking absolutely awful now this is awesome in a previous video went and saw the grave of Audie Murphy at Arlington well here is his Ike jacket from World War II you can see his his ribbons which at the top includes the Medal of Honor and they've also got his pocket New Testament and his dog tags that is really cool that's the coolest thing I've seen in this whole display okay so that was the Hall of Military History here at the Smithsonian Museum of American History uh, by far the the best thing in there to me was Audie Murphy's uniform and his dog tags and, and his uh, personal Bible uh, we're gonna go ahead and continue going through the museum there's a lot here to see uh, but probably going to be in a different video oh how sad somebody lost their kite <laughs> <laughs> 